Welcome back on the channel. Today I want to talk about one of the systems that we haven't mentioned on this channel or tried out on this channel. So as you perhaps know, I've got, uh, I've created this selection chart here, which is also available in one of my community posts. And I just want to quickly go over it again. So if you don't know what this is, this was a selection chart that I created for a friend of mine. And uh, we start here with the question, do you want to game on your PC? No or yes. If you want to game, do you have a really new GPU? Especially if you've got an NVIDIA based uh, GPU, then it's a good thing to take Windows 11 for the drivers and some of the benefits you get with DirectX 12. The other thing is, if you need some kernel level DRMs for the games you play, then um, it's a good thing to also take Windows 11 if your computer is new enough to run Windows 11. And the other thing is, you have to ask yourself, do you use Game Pass? If you use Game Pass, you have to use Windows. There's no way around it. The other thing is, if you are not answering that questions with yet uh, with yes, then you can of course use uh, Linux for your gaming needs. And in my opinion, uh, suitable for gaming are the Arch-based Linux systems or the distributions that uh, target especially into gaming like um, Nobara, Holo ISO, and so on. But in my opinion, it's a, a great way um, to get in touch with Arch. And uh, yeah, my experience with Arch as a gaming uh, system is not so bad. And the other path that you can take here is to go into the ecosystems. So before you uh, take an, a Linux and uh, use Linux as your main uh, system, you have to ask yourself, are you in Apple's, Google's or Microsoft's ecosystem? So the boundaries are not so strong anymore. There was a hard, um, yeah, uh, it was very a strong bound between the ecosystem and the systems um, once, but um, yeah, uh, today almost all ecosystems are usable in a browser like um, macOS. You don't have to use, you can just use the iCloud and Apple Music, for example, in the browser. Of course, Google was, uh, I think, one of the first that had uh, Google Docs online and also the Google Drive and um, Google Cloud online. And uh, Windows has got its um, OneDrive and Office 365. So if you use Edge, you are also already in this whole ecosystem with Bing and so on. Um, Yeah, what uh, what am I using my systems for? I'm using Windows 11 for gaming because I need this uh, kernel level DRM for the games that I want to play. And I've um, yeah chosen to stick to Windows 11 to uh, use that games. I'm using Arch uh, for my other systems. I'm using macOS on my Macs where I do um, iOS development. And yeah, Windows, like here, Windows 11 I'm using. I'm not using the Microsoft ecosystem. I'm at the moment bound uh, to the Apple ecosystem and also use their phones and so on. But the thing that I uh, never had the opportunity to test out uh, was Chrome OS. And I looked into that and there's also um, Chrome OS Flex available. So Google bought a, um, a company that had an cloud ready image uh, available and they uh, bought the company and uh, put chrome os on that base and this is uh, chrome os flex so this version of chrome os runs on uh, more than the certified uh, chrome chromebooks and uh, chrome boxes so the problem is they don't have the nvidia proprietary drivers in this image so you won't uh, run this on an nvidia gpu if you've got an iGPU, it's no problem to run it and the other thing is there are some amd graphics cards that are supported if that are cards um, that are also available in, for example, notebooks or something. So um, this uh, AMD cards are um, supported, um, but uh, yeah, that depends on the card. 
And the problem is if you've got a Chrome OS flex, then some of these things that Chrome OS features are missing. So as far as I know, you can't use the um, Android apps. You can't use the Play Store by default and you can't use the uh, um, Linux subsystem. So normally on the Chrome um, books, there is a feature um, for developers where you can enable um, Linux on that system. That's not available in Chrome OS Flex, but otherwise the system is the same like you would use it on a Chromebook. And what I then uh, have done is um, first thing, how do you get it? Um, there's this web address um, which always points to the latest version. So you, I will put this link in the description of the video so you uh, can just copy it out. And uh, if you um, use this link, you will directly get a zip file with the newest version of Chrome OS Flex. The other thing is that you can do if you are on Windows and perhaps on Mac OS, I haven't tried that, on Windows it works. You just go into the uh, Chrome Web Store and get an extension. So the extension is here, the um, Chrome OS. What was it called? Chrome OS image. I can just look it up here. So this is the German name, but um, recovery. Yeah, so it's called in English, it's called a Chromebook recovery utility. And in German, it's called Programm zur Chromebook Wiederherstellung. So um, you can just download this tool and install it in Chrome as an extension. And if you start the extension here under Linux, he will tell you Linux is not supported. Um, but if you're running this on Windows, then he will give you a selection which device you are downloading this image for. So if you've got a uh, supported Chromebook or Chromebox, then you can just download it here from a drop down menu. And uh, if you want to have a Chrome OS Flex, then you just go to Chrome OS as a, um, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, as the um, type as as the um, type of of the system, and then you take a Chrome OS Flex as the um, image version that you want to download, and this tool just downloads it and uh, flashes the file that we now um, are using um, to a flash drive, and you can just boot from the flash drive. Um, just make sure to. Um, not have secure boot um, on I think and then you can just uh, boot directly uh, with this flash drive. We are not doing that um, today because um, we are doing it in a different way. We've just downloaded that file um, that I've shown you with this link here and I can just show you um, I've already um, downloaded that and unzipped it. So here are two files. This is the version that I'm using and I've played around with and this is the downloaded version. And you just unzip it and get this bin file where everything is included that you need to boot and run the system. So and uh, this file then we can, if I clear the screen here, um, I've uh, figured out a way how you can start this file. So you need a QMU and uh, under Arch Linux you can just install QMU uh, full and then you get the whole system that you need. And uh, I've tried a really long time to get it running and I can um, just quickly go over what you need to do. So first of all, I'm starting here in QMU system and as a drive, I take the file that we've just downloaded. I give the machine eight gigabyte of RAM and four of my CPU cores. And now uh, the thing why I only can do this under Linux. You have to enable KVM here. 
and uh, that's not available in the QMU version on the Windows. And without this and without the um, GL support, the performance is just so bad that it's unusable, this image. So um, I got it to working um, or I got it running um, under Windows, but the performance was so slow and the uh, mouse cursor was so laggy that it is uh, that it was unusable and you will see the performance here under linux with this setup is really good and uh, works really well so what i'm doing here is you have to do this uh, show cursor on in um combination with usb device usb tablet so the problem was that i didn't had a mouse cursor in the machine and with this setup i get a mouse cursor and it works quite nicely um, what this uh, this here does is this usb tablet variable sets the mouse so that you are using like a trackpad so you won't have a right click anymore you have to use um, both mouse um yeah uh, both uh, secondary and uh, primary click to get a right click and uh, both mouse buttons at the same time but um yeah that's the only uh, thing you have to know otherwise it works exactly um like you uh, think it would work and um for the other virtualization options that are available so I tried um, VirtualBox. There is a problem that the uh, graphic devices that are available under VirtualBox are not supported in this image. The other thing was uh, Hyper-V. Hyper-V is a problem. This image wants a um, SATA drive and Hyper-V only provides an SCSI drive. So that's the problem why it doesn't run um, under Hyper-V. And the other thing that I found out was um, VMware Player. Um, so uh, that doesn't work. I think it was also the graphics drivers why it doesn't work. And uh, yeah, so uh, that are all systems that I tried. But with this here, um, it runs uh, under Linux. And now just uh, start into it here. And with Control alt f I can... Uh, do full screen here the first time this image boot uh, boots it will uh, take a little bit longer to boot uh, because uh, yeah they are shifting around some uh, files or something in the background um, so you have to be a little bit patient so and then you get um, the normal uh, setup screen here um, as you can see here, the performance is uh, quite as you expect. Um, here are the language settings. I will take English here so that you can follow a little bit better. And uh, here you can select to install or try it first. So as I'm using this file from my um, hard drive, I can just uh, stay on the try version. And uh, But he will also remember everything you set up. So normally now here you can log into your uh, Google account and he will take all the data from the Google account and um, configure the system. Um, I don't want to do this now because I have already set up this. What I want to show is you can also log in as a guest and I don't want to send the data to Google. I just want to start it here. And the performance is really good in this configuration. So I tried a long time. Sometimes here this bar was flickering and so on. And um, but here, if you um, yeah use it with the settings that I found out, it's quite performant and yeah quite like you would use it on a real machine, in my opinion. So there's no difference here. It's it's really. Um, performant. The only thing is you have to click both mouse buttons so that you get the right click and um, uh, what else. So yes, and uh, this is here the guest session. So uh, here is a limited amount of apps available. Um, here also is here in incognito mode and everything will be wiped after you log out of the session. And uh, yeah, that's the thing I want to do now. And I will just log into the other machine that I've got here. 
and I have to see what was the name Chrome OS Flex like this and then I have to look up my password That's interesting that it takes much longer now um, as uh, the times I tried before because of course now I'm recording with OBS in the background and it seems that uh, I'm connected um, to an external drive and I'm running this uh, Linux at the moment over an external drive and it seems like um, the OBS recording um, takes some of the bandwidth here. Um, so now i have to uh, input here this password and um, if you're asking yourself why does he have uh, such a long and complicated password or oh, i hope i've got it right um yeah it's uh, normally i don't use that account and so i've got a generated password on that account and on my um uh, chrome session on windows i've just um saved that uh, password and i'm normally not using it for anything so um what you here got are the um, default apps and uh, this are only links uh, to the online system so um, i've already here created some links of my own for example here kotaku um, you just go into the uh, chrome browser and um, add one of these links and then here you can um, uh, pin it uh, to the shelf and the uh, shelf is here the um, yeah, uh, the taskbar or something so they call it shelf it, it, and it's just a link um, everything uh, evolves or, or everything is working with uh, Chrome on the system uh, it's just a basic system uh, with a browser in it but in my opinion it really works well and uh, it's uh, yeah if I'm not running here um OBS in the background, it uh, instantly boots up. It's uh, it's really responsive, the system, as far as I'm uh, here in this um, QM, uh, QMO um, virtual machine. Already in the virtual machine, it's really performant. And if you have this natively uh, running on a system, I think it will be a really good um, experience to use it. So, um, I can show you here, for example, yeah, Kotaku I've got already. Um, let's take, for example, yeah, Crunchyroll. It's an anime platform. Um, so if yeah, so here's or here's also an app available. So that's another thing you can um, install here when you click, um, like more tools. And here you can create the shortcuts. But for example, like um, YouTube or some other websites that support this, they are available here as an app. And then I can just install uh, the app here and it will be created as an app here. So that's another thing that's available. Um, so now here I've got this as an app here. And also the uh, right click, uh, I have to uh, click both. And uh, here's a little bit more available than just um, here, like the links that I've got. And um, yeah, but that's only for supported things. For example, YouTube does uh, have this, um, Crunchyroll does have this. It uh, was just an example here. And um, I don't know if the Apple tools have something like that. Um, so you can try that out. And uh, what else to say? Yeah, it's uh, responsive. He just locked me into all the tools. I don't want to show you that. Um, uh, perhaps a conclusion. If I have the chance, um, 
to use a Chromebook and I buy it as that and I'm in the Google ecosystem, um, then in my opinion is uh, it's a good choice. Um, yeah, for someone who is not so tech savvy or something, he just buys this. They are quite cheap, the machines. And for uh, studying, working or something, I can... Um, really see why it uh, appeals to a lot of people. Um, if I personally uh, have uh, the choice, then in my opinion, I will stick to Linux. Um, you just get um, more options and I can install uh, Chrome on Linux and uh, use it the same and here to configure such a bar or something with uh, uh, yeah, um, like a dock or something uh, with some icons in the middle it's uh, quickly configured under linux and uh, of course then you can just use it like that but for someone who just want a system um, that's running and uh, so on it's it's quite easy here you've you've got uh, only some basic functionality and i can see that for example my mother or something um, someone that's not so tech savvy uh, really can use this quite uh, nicely and uh, yeah i would not stick to it but um, the experience was quite okay in my opinion yeah, so if you want to give it a try, I will also link um, the QMU um, uh, command that you need to uh, start this machine. And uh, as I already said, I will give you the link in the description. And uh, I yeah, would be really grateful if you um, consider subscribing to the channel. I'm still on a miss mission here to get 300 subscribers on the channel. And yeah, if you. Um, write out all the systems then perhaps leave a comment uh, which is your favorite operating system and why did you choose that um yeah so you've seen here um why i've chosen linux and windows 11 as my systems and uh, yeah so thank you for watching and bye